My name is uh, Rob Paulin. Currently, I'm the secretary of the Mana Cruising Club, and I've been a member of Mana Cruising Club for about uh, 30 years. We have been trying to promote activities in the sounds for our club members. One of those activities has turned into doing the traps on Piggersgo Island. We had noticed a decline on Pickersgo. I think it got perhaps a poison bait effort in about 2006, and by 2012 or 13, it was pretty quiet again on Pickersgo as far as the bird life was concerned. We'd take a couple of new guys on every trip and they generally start off their first trip going with someone else who's done it before and knows the tracks and knows the ground and everything. They get a chance to learn the layout and learn the operation and they can have a go at rebaiting a few traps. And I thought it would be nice for the experience of cruising in the sounds to be enhanced with the predator-free status. That's how we started the uh, arrangement with Doc, and we found out that they had 100 traps on the island. They hadn't been baited for a while, so we went over and helped them bait them the first time and obtained a Doc Community Services grant, which has allowed us to double the trap density We've maintained a baited and gas trap network on the island for 18 months or so. The challenges on the island are that the terrain is fairly steep and it's pretty slippery when it's wet. It's a native regrowth from farming in the 1950s and 60s. Some of the face of the island have quite tall trees on them. Would have been really impressive 100 years ago, but it's a lot better than it was 50 years ago. The downside to that is there's a lot of low scrub through the island. Some of the appeal of the good nature traps which we're using on Pigger's Gill is that they don't put any poison into the natural environment. There's no secondary poisoning, so there's no impact on the island in that regard at all. It's a combination of doing something that we think is good for the environment and enjoying a bit of boating in the sounds and offering that experience to a wider variety of Mana Cruising Club members than may otherwise be able to, to do it. Hopefully that's a win for everybody. When we first went there, we saw rats on the island, we saw no birds. Now, when we went back last weekend, we saw fantails, tuis, bellbirds, and what I think are wax eyes. And fantails, first time we saw them was the previous trip, so they haven't been on the island until recently. So we're pretty confident that there is an increase in the bird life. Pickers Gill is right beside Blue Mine and Long Island and Mochihara Island, which are already predator free. So once we get the environment right, we will soak up a few birds from those islands and that will regenerate the bird life quite quickly. The guys who come away with us, they enjoy the trip. We have a good weekend away, a bit of exercise. It's something positive, and it's something positive that the Mana Cruising Club have been able to contribute to the sounds. There are some areas of the island that you feel like you're the first one who's ever been there, which is some of the appeal, I think. I'm not sure that we want to get perfectly manicured tracks all over the place. I think we just want it to be a bit uh, bushy and natural. And it's conceivable that at some stage in the future we'll have the rats under control enough that they might release a few kiwis on the island and you could be on that mooring overnight and hear some kiwis in the bush in the morning. <laughs>